Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hate to Break It to You. I think I'm going to do this as a subset. Hate to Break It to You and World is on Fire. I guess when Joe Rogan does the Joe Rogan experience, but he has like Protect Our Parks, that's like a subset within it, right? So that's what this World on Fire is going to be. Hate to Break It to You, World's on Fire, and I'll number them. As you know, so much insanity is happening at the moment. All I can do is react to it. So... So many things to say there. I've been saying this forever, as you know. Um, as people don't want to work, that's fine. But just know people don't really care if you work. What's wild about China is that looks like a little noodle shop or just a little basic restaurant because of the authentic, rustic Chinese um, decor, de decor. Is that right? And yet you have these... Obviously, these are like pre-kindergarten type of movement robots. But they, the fact that they made them already, but they used it in that, like, looks like a little cute restaurant. The fact that they would have a budget for that, it's wild. But maybe they can save money. But, I mean, that's real. That's what's happening. It, you don't think it's coming here, but it is. And that is 100%. Like, that's, people don't want to work. They want to do OnlyFans and stuff. You better figure it out. Okay, sure. Because they don't want you to have a job. I mean, that's just like, that's nothing. What are you going to do when that thing is um, doing jokes better than me? Or when that thing is being a doctor? Or that is, pe do people don't realize it. They're too busy watching the Chiefs and seeing if Taylor Swift is in the box. And while you're doing that, the wool's being pulled under your eyes. And if you're not paying attention, I hope you do get fooled. Because it's, I don't have any sympathy for people that tune in and drop out. Or, t or, t or tune out and drop out. Like, we are... In an unprecedented place. My buddy went to CES. He's telling me. And this is what he wrote me. And I got to sit with him this week. Um, but he's a nerd. He's also a comedian. And I'm mad I didn't go. And he said. He goes. Let's talk about CES this week. But basically. I think for a few years. There's going to be an economic boom. And then it's going to be followed by social collapse. Within the decade. Now that's a guy who wears the three masks. And is scared of his own shadow. But we believe a lot of the same stuff. In terms of technology. And um, I got to hear what he had to say. But CES, he said, was insane. He said, we're in crazy times. I mean, there's an example. So, I mean, we're going to have to coexist with these things that eventually are going to paperclip us. So, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. Hey, guys, I got a sponsor. Let's talk about it today. It's actually, you know, I don't talk about anything unless I use it. So, it's sheath underwear. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you what, go to it, which is go to sheathunderwear.com, S-H-E-A-T-H, sheathunderwear.com. I've probably seen it. They have a little symbol on the shirts. They look like a little transformer. Sheath underwear, they're amazing. They're cool, meaning they feel good. They're silky. They have a little pouch. So what you do is you take your uh, meat and veg, you know what I'm saying, your kibbles, your bits, and they get tucked in this little pouch where they rest, and the rest of the underwear is snug everywhere. Um, I'm telling you, I usually don't like to sleep in underwear. I like to sleep buck. That's right, because I like nice, cool sheets. But I sleep in these underwear, and I don't feel like I'm wearing underwear. They're comfortable. They're good. They don't sweat. And they also keep you all hugged up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm just telling you, if you want to, you should really check them out because they also last. I have a ton of them. I'm going to do them next time and show them to you all. Uh, go to sheathunderwear.com, promo code Jamie. Sheathunderwear.com, promo code Jamie. And try them. They're going to have a whole thing. I think they're giving 20% off. They might. They're the official underwear of the UFC, so that's why I always see UFC fighters all tucked away. It's because they're wearing a sheath. Unsheath your sheath. Keep your sword sheathed. Sheathunderwear.com. Promo code Jamie. Get the sheath. I'm telling you. Like, if you want to free ball it, nah. That can hurt. You know you bruise, and next thing you know you feel sick to your stomach. The other stuff doesn't really... This actually tucks you in, but you don't feel, like, any pressure. 
if you're like me. You don't like pressure on the dill pickle unless, you know, someone is applying it, if you know what I'm saying. Sheathunderwear.com, promo code Jamie. Check it out. Peace. Consegue captar as vibrações. Vem até nós. Ou não vem à noite. Mano, e pior que mexe esquisito demais. Ele parece. Sabe aquele negócio índico? Essas plásticas é grande. Tem um movimento índico, um arco e flecha. É o movimento dele. Ó, com o zoom aqui dá pra ver ele se mexendo melhor. O zoom dele é melhor que o meu. E outra coisa. Se você for fazer uma comparação, ele, ele é mais ou menos do tamanho daquela árvore lá. Entendeu? Ele é grande. Tem outra coisa, até o jeito que você vai tentar, não tá normal. So, I don't know. Obviously, aliens are everywhere right now. You're seeing them. Uh, you're seeing that some people will say they're real. Other people say they're a distraction. Uh, apparently, they found on this mountain in Brazil, uh, these were these beings up there now to me they don't look crazy tall but i guess for pers perspective they're saying they're about 10 feet uh they're skinny the one guy's got a man bun uh there's at least two of them and a lot of people are saying that you know like the, all the stuff is like the gin there's something called the j-i-n-n -N, which i don't know enough about but i'm hearing about but obviously the nephilim they say the nephilim are coming back and they're not aliens they're more about giants or idbs which are interdimensional beings um and they're saying that they're giants and that they're coming back now to me i was like that doesn't look that crazy because i there was a video a long time ago of something far away and we didn't know what it was and it was a mountain that was really hard to get to and they ended up being like a, a blowy thing and it was like a wind thing and it was high up but so that made sense but this one it doesn't look there that tall but i guess they said it's like impossible to get to the top of this mountain like you just can't get to it and the fact that there's beings up there walking um again i hate it when people are talking about something so serious and like <laughs> they're laughing it's like if it's so strange why are you laughing are you that nervous so i don't know there's been a lot of alien talk lately i cover that because i do the show with jack and jay um but the more people tell me stuff the more i'll look into it. it's one of my things i do um but yeah i mean it doesn't look that crazy to me but i guess that mountain's really hard to get to and they're like taller than it's like forced perspective now this is a pretty crazy one um So let me read about this. It says this in the tweet. The Chinese government is manufacturing mobile crematoria. How should we interpret this? Since there will be so many deaths and the existing crematoriums are inadequate, mobile crematorium crews will be needed. Are they preparing for new disease? Now, again, very weird. That's very weird. Here's what I'll say. On the, on the non-conspiracy side, China is very efficient. China doesn't deal with their emotions. I don't think there's a lot of um, emotional... This is going to sound terrible. So I hope it's not racist, but I don't know a lot of Chinese people. That's not true. That's not true. I was going to say, do they deal with their emotions? Like, you know, Japanese feel shame, and instead of talking it out, they do something called harikari. Now, obviously, it's changing and it's better now, but it's still a big thing in their culture. Shame, don't talk about it, and you kill yourself. So I don't know if China has that, but I do feel that, you know, China has a stigma for being, like, a little robotic. I'm not dealing with their emotions. So if somebody dies, terrible, pff, run it through. Pff, put them through. Let's go. We got shit to do. So on one part, I just feel like this is China being innovative, and there's so many people, and they're just being China and they're like okay well we, we, we this is a really this is a way to get it done I mean it's a kind of a sick business idea in a good way I and mean, it's terrible to say that but it's like get it done right there move to the next one that's just 
innovation. The, the darker side is that they're saying that if there is a new disease and you're not going to be able to get rid of the bodies in time, which is crazy, you do it right there in a mobile crematorium. As you're driving to get dim sum before you pick up another body, you're burning one in the back, which is an insane concept. Think about it. I was going to say Tim Hortons, but they don't have Tim Bits in China. I don't think they do. Maybe they do. That's an insane concept. And <laughs> I mean, you know, disease X was trending this week where the WEF is going to get together and talk about a potential disease, kind of like what they did before COVID. They ran that simulation and then we had actual COVID. So that's what people are talking about in the darker circles of, hey, disease X is here. So I don't know. I know a lot of people are sick right now. I know I feel really good. I was fucking beaten down for two weeks, but I wasn't. I was mobile. I just was like, ah. I didn't have the COVID. At least I didn't test it. I don't think I had RSV. I was choking a lot for one day, but other than that, I'm fine, and I don't feel any phlegm or anything. So there's something going around, and it's happened. To, the, the pokies are getting it worse than the non-pokies. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the best-case scenario is China is being efficient and clean, and clean, because I will say people that are funeral home people do say the best thing to do is to um, you cremate because it's, the cleanest way. Or the worst case scenario is new disease is dropping and China's in the know. These beings that they're in communication with, premier scientists on planet Earth right now, who are actively engaged, according to, to their own words, communicating with something, something with a personality, in their own words, from another dimension. And that's the purpose of the collider. I mean, people need to understand, this is not science fiction, this that's is correct. fact. The imminency of what they intend to do, which is opening this gateway, and understand that the world of science in terms of particle physics also overlaps into DNA, into biology. Yes. There's a multifaceted, multi-level agenda at play. So we are talking about changing humans, changing the planet, not only bringing in information, through a portal, we're also talking about definitively changing our way of life. This is a threat to our existence, to the creation of mankind. We're on a verge of a paradigm shift. They've cracked open a portal or doorway or whatever you want to call it from another dimension. Uh, by their own admission, they are already in communication with some something that has a personality and has ability to communicate. Look at what it says there. He claims that CERN destroyed the universe during recent experiments, which has resulted in us living. Look, this whole thing is fascinating. I've been seeing a ton of it. Obviously, I've seen on Rogan for a while. He he talked about that kid, and I saw that kid a while back, and then I love that Joe talked about it, and then now he's got these people on this news station talking about it. I mean, look, it's in the zeitgeist. You don't have to be a conspiracy person, conspiratorial person or truth or whatever, that CERN is something's going on the CERN. The opening ceremony to CERN was weird. Um, the goddess Vishnu too, or some goddess, that big circular thing was in the front, whether it's real or it was a mock sack um, ritual, whatever, that was that. And um, you could say whatever you want, but to me, this makes more sense than just hitting atoms together to find out the Big Bang. That sounds weird. This is more like, there's a lot of smoke around this of like opening these dimensions. We know there's more dimensions that are here. We know there could be beings right now looking at me. I can't access them with my senses because I'm limited. Just like David Icke, you know, who's the pioneer who's been, you know, he's been, he he had to walk so all of us can run. He used the real OG with it. And he's mocked forever. Um, and he brought about this stuff. My father would talk about this stuff. Alex Jones talks about this stuff. You know, and now I think it's becoming more and more people are talking about, but those are the people that really started it for me in my mind. And, um... You know, parallel dimensions have been talked about forever without conspiracies. So that's wild. A lot of people say aliens aren't aliens. There are other dimensions. I also say ghosts aren't so ghosts. Ghosts are people trapped in another dimension. That's what I think. And spirits and where string theory comes in and kind of really incredible. Do I think we're going to be walking around with, you know, and you're going to see like Ghostbuster type of stuff? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I think dimensions are going to collide and I think that portals are going to happen and I think they're already happening. 
In fact, there's a girl that talks to me a lot, and she's doing this stuff now, and she told me, like, the five hot spots, and one of them is in Sedona, Arizona. And she's like, there's a big portal out here. You got to come check it out. So, and I've been hearing this a lot. So it's not just me. I mean, it's happening. People are talking about it more and more. Like, you go to Trader Joe's, and people are talking about it. This is some fucking crazy shite. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. I'm not an African-American. I'm an American. Oh, girl, don't, don't set get up your Twitter on fire. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. I mean, what? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> what did you just say? Stop, stop, stop the tape right now. OK. I will say this. What? I mean, I don't know where my roots go to. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far back they go. I can't go on, you know, I don't know how far back, and I don't know what country in Africa I'm from. But I do know that my roots are in Louisiana. I mean, you're going to get a lot of flack for saying you're not African American. You know that, right? I yeah. don't label so? myself. Okay. So I want you to say what you really mean by that. She what did. I really mean by that is I'm an American. That's what I really mean. I'm tired. Of I love her. I love Raven Simone. I mean, I think she's probably a super spirit of a person. I'd love to talk with her. It's crazy because I grew up watching her, which is crazy because I'm older, but she was, you know, 40 years ago. She's Rudy. Oh, uh, no, Ru not Rudy. Um, Damn. What's her character's name? She was the, you know, came in like middle of the series and just incredible and she stole America's hearts. But this is why I love her. She probably would say even more, but they didn't, Oprah didn't push her. But basically where she's not even saying she's an American, she's probably just saying, she probably doesn't even identify as a, as a woman or as a, a gender or a race. She probably just identifies as a human. Like I'm just a person. You know what I mean? That's what I love about her. She was probably chilling for Oprah, but like she probably just says, I'm a, I'm a human. You know what I mean? which is exactly where we need to be. I subscribe to that wholeheartedly. You know, we're too much caught up in gender politics, identity politics, race politics. We're never, ever, ever going to get ahead if we keep doing that. And I have a whole rant about it. I'm not going to do it here, but you will never enjoy the present or get to a new future if you keep digging up the past. And that's a deep conversation that we can have. You can learn from the past, but you can't, it can never be rectified unless we go discern and go back in time and redo it. But like the fact that she just said that it will piss people off, but it's brilliant. It's like, I'm just an American. I would even go even farther. I'm not even American. I'm just a human. You know what I mean? Like we got to stop having gender wars, race wars, territorial wars, country wars. We have to have a unity of thought. That's it. Unity of feeling. And, you know, so that's you want to talk about brave. That's brave and awesome. She goes on the biggest platform in the world, the biggest talk show legend of all time and says, this is what I am. Not scared. And Oprah, you know, to her credit, but Oprah pushed back, was like, you shouldn't do it, which was a little annoying because Oprah knows what she's doing. But Oprah, you know, let her say it and, and understood it, did, but pushed back. So that's what we got to be. You sit over there. I'll deal with this. I explained to Red, chance to buy a house, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, escrow is going to close. Uh, Four days, I'm $3,500 short, and uh, I'll work it off. I'll pay you back any way I can. It's a, uh, so he said, $3,500. Ain't got no small change on me right now. But uh, calls his secretary over with a thumb snap. He says, bring me my checkbook. So he's writing a check, Pat Morita, $3,500. And as he's writing, before he signs his name, he says, now look here, I don't want to hear about no papers, no Payback, no interest, no I owe you, no nothing. You want to pay me back? I know you're going to make it one day, son. You do this for somebody. Never forgot it. Fortunately, I got to that place he predicted I was going to get to and uh, have helped a few people under the same conditions. That's not a world on fire. That's just, that is just a beautiful moment. First of all, that's exactly what we should be in our world and in our business. Mentors seeing the future legends helping future legends and not wanting the money back instead pay it forward like that's just a beautiful clip and he by doing that red fox helped us get another legend i mean jesus christ mr miyagi he was Ar he was arnold like there's so many different things pat marina's done but also let's just be real i knew he was a comedian because I knew that he had done it. I didn't know until later in, all, in my career that Pat Marino was a comedian. I didn't know that he was an amazing comedian. And what I didn't know is he, that he's an amazing impressionist. That's Jay Farrow, Frank Caliendo, Jamie Foxx level. You know what I mean? Jonathan Kite too. Like that's 
that level of impression. Like, it's unbelievably uncanny. Like, do you ever think of that? He's so good that he had this whole other talent. Pat Morita is just a super legend from the Bay. And I don't think people realize the, the amount of struggle he went through. I think he had some addiction issues. He had a lot of personal issues. But Jesus Christ, the fact that he played some of the biggest things which was amazing at, but were like kind of stereotypical Asian characters in terms of like, you know, Arnold, he played that, which was, he was awesome at it. And Mr. Miyagi, you know, he barely spoke and brilliant at both of them. What I'm saying is the fact that we didn't give him many more roles to show his other sides, that's what you should talk about in terms of closed mind in Hollywood and like pigeonholing right there. Because the talent that was not utilized for all of us to see, like, I'm so glad this clip is making the rounds. Jesus, he's brilliant. So brilliant, but just a good vibe. Um, oh, let me see some more here. Um, some of these go to my phone. You see Paul Harvey, right? Um, Paul Harvey, I've been seeing forever. You're going to see that. Um, everyone's going to look at that. Oh, this is a deep one, guy. The final goal is to eradicate humanity as we know it. Once you understand the final destination, it becomes much easier to look back and identify the psychological conditioning, the biological tampering, the cultural grooming and the educational prepping that we have been subjected to for decades in preparation to making us accept a post-human future. It takes a lot of physical and psychological abuse to get an intelligent species like ours to agree to its own extinction. Most, if not all, that has transcended in the last 60 years was designed to get us closer to accepting such a dystopian reality. Whether you care to accept it or not, we live in a hyper-controlled matrix where our perception of reality is meticulously planned managed and executed in order to control and steer us in whichever direction they wish. And the direction is a post-human world. For this, they first needed to destabilize, dehumanize, and demoralize humanity through every means possible. The destruction of the new- It's long, and there's a lot more to that. But this woman was reading from the book. I believe it was Ray Kurzweil's book. But it's fascinating listening to this when she was reading it because I, I saw that video a while ago. And, and granted, I'm trying to get caught up on all this stuff. Um, that's written in a book by Ray Kurzweil, who you can look up many things he's done. Inventor, strategist, futurist, transhumanist. But one of the things is... He made the Kurzweil keyboard, but he's done tons of stuff, hundreds of stuff. But he was a Google, like, I want to say, consultant or strategist or the... Um, yeah, and he talks about the end of humanism in, in multiple books. And um, you can talk, listen to him on Lexi Friedman's podcast. So I don't know what the deal is with him, if he's good or bad. I've always, you know, listened to what he had to say. I didn't listen to a lot of it. You know, transhumanism, the way he approaches it is a good thing. But all the pushback from people, maybe it isn't because... Do you want to be connected with your brain so you get an idea? The big, the simplest thing is this. If you look at AI, and AI is being trained on the hive mind. So all of us are there, and information is in there. They put AI in there. They learn, and it's a big mix of everything. And people go, oh, AI is brilliant, but it's only copying what it learned from us. But it puts it in crazy combinations that make it original, right? Or you feel it's original. So if you hook up with Neuralink and you put that in your mind, so the question is, are you connected to the internet? And is the internet, are you getting more information or is the internet controlling you? So that to me, they can turn you into a Manchurian candidate. They probably don't have to have you wired in. They probably can just do it. I already feel, how many of you really feel this like i already feel they're in my mind like i'm scared like i don't want to think certain because you just think all types of shit and it's like who knows what they could fucking do to you right they're recording our thoughts yeah, have you ever thought of something just thought of something and the ad comes up for it like if they're gonna judge your thoughts like because the way people process things are so different like i've thought of something and an ad for that that i never really see will come up they're already kind of in there. I don't know how. I can't explain it, but I'm guaranteeing more people have had this where you some sort of like it's making a thing where it can 
it can decode your brain waves. And this proves that your brain waves aren't just these flighty, like, oh man, it's your aura. No, it's actual physical. A brain wave is a physical thing that we can't really touch or feel, but it's being transmitted. And you can say that because of the split atom theory. Damn, if you really think about this stuff, you'll crack your mind, man. Woo! I gotta stay a little dumber. Like my brain can blow up. В то же время вот фотография китайского лунохода у нее особенных вопросов не вызывает. А это то, что кажется не настоящим? Да, да, вот то, что красное. Это сетка гугловская, не наша. Так что в ней было предвзято себя какой-то. Удивительно, но там точно вот она, ну, она смотрит по очень много параметров, в том числе там падение, цвета тени и так далее, и так далее, и показывает, что инкорпорировано. Look, I don't know how you feel, but Putin seems like he's becoming a better guy. <laughs> like, he, the way in my world and the people, they're painting him as a better dude than they are a lot of these other people. And again, if you believe in Satanism, that everything is bad is good and reverse and everything's upside down, then everything that they said about Putin could be a lie. He could be a real patriot, meaning he wants people to live and learn. Now, I don't know all of his crimes, um, but I'll tell you what, the hardcore liberals that shit on him or say stuff about communism have all gone over to his birthday. You can find that on the internet. There's a ton of them. And they're probably liberals, Hollywood liberals. You can look them up. And he played the piano. I don't know. The way people talk about the Ukrainian guy, he's the bad guy. He's an actor. Putin's trying to fight to keep world uh, from becoming taken over. I don't know how to describe it, but it makes sense. And the fact that he is putting out there that the moon landing photos may be fake, a world leader, a world, you can say whatever you want, but he's a world leader that our president meets with and he's a dominant force that we don't want to fuck with. So we, he comes to the table. Now, whether he's controlled or not, I mean, if you believe this stuff, then he should be controlled, right? But they do a good job of faking you out. So he's out here saying, the Google is saying that the moon landing is fake. Now, what would that do? Why would they put that out there if they controlled him? To just let you know that they're doing it and it's like, you know, Satanism 101 where you got to reveal the process. I don't know. But it's pretty fascinating. And, you know, they say that Putin is, he has a communistic country. But you, you have to see this video. I'll do it for you later of, of Russian teenagers and American teenagers. They put it side by side and the Russians seem like they're really um and it's not a camp of or an army camp or any military it's just an outing maybe we'll never get there but i feel like it's tipping toward lab leak and not bats it's worse than that i think because what would, what are the labs in ukraine what, what is that about the american labs over there as if we're dumping in ukraine all the things that we're, 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 what, what are you talking about american labs the labs that we have in Ukraine. Tipping towards lab leak. Dude. Yo, Bill Maher. How is Bill Maher so smart? Like, he's so smart. Is he? This has to be. You have to be acting, Bill. The fact that you would actually say, I think it's lab leak. Oh, please. Dude, where you been? Put down the fucking weed stick, dog. Dude, I love Bill Maher. And, like, he's flipping, but, dude, I love you, Bill. You gave me some of my early breaks, but, dude, are you really that guy? It's like, now how do we have a lab leak? I'll work on the impression. Dude, so then Oliver Stone hips him to the game. You know, I love Bill Maher, dude. I think he's a really fucking smart dude, so I don't want to really comment on him. And I like that he's pushing back, but... Dude, this is the reason why people don't like Hollywood because you can't be airing it. Like, he's pretty chill about it, but he's laughing and, like, actually surprised. So either he is controlled and he knows everything and he's just playing dumb. That icky, icky, sticky, wicky dog got you. They had a no white people Christmas party. This is what is going on, folks. This is a government agency. This is the mayor of Boston, which I gotta say, I actually like a lot as a city. Pretty cool place. The mayor of Boston is having a no white people Christmas party. And we are supposed to think this is normal? Can you imagine what would happen if a mayor said we're having a Christmas party and no black people are invited? I mean, it would be the number one story for weeks throughout Christmas. That elected official would probably get charged with some sort of crime. This is considered to be progressive. White people are excluded. But yeah, they want to try to set traps. Colored people, oh my goodness, how dare you? 
people of color, well, now you're speaking my language. Are you kidding me? And I think a lot of people out there, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, are slowly becoming aware of how ridiculous all of this is. That's insane. It speaks for itself. But like, look, I understand that white people, especially white men, are the lowest me, the lowest on the oppression matrix. I am the lowest. I've had every opportunity you can, except I had some health issues and I still. To deem that white people are the devil and did it all and like I am, like just because I have it in my bones and I've learned some behaviors that would probably piss off some liberals that they can teach me and I can unlearn some of those behaviors. At the end of the day, I'm still a decent human being. I'm not a bad dude. You know, I've made mistakes in my life and continue to make them, but I'm not fucking so bad that I shouldn't be invited to the party just because it's like, is your life so bad that any white per just because you can't do that with other races. And I get it. Nor would you, should you want to, like I wouldn't, I would want anyone at the Christmas party. But again, I am not of their ilk or their race or their gender that I feel like, no, we've had you enough. We, you've caused us a lot of problems. We just want a night without you. I can get that. But A, it's annoying that you don't, the press isn't covering it. It would be huge because if we said no Asians at this party, we, everyone would be fired. No blacks at this party, everyone would be fired. No gays at this party. No, you know, come on. That's insane. Again, the most inclusive people that want to be these liberals, progressive, are the most exclusive. So... That's the mayor of Boston, a chick who's of Asian descent and no whites, like actively saying don't allow them. Now, if it was a meeting and of like of oppressed people and they wanted to get together, I understand it. Or like, listen, this is a, a meeting for Bangladesh and Chinese and black and African and, you know, Senegal and, and I don't know. Mongolia, any race that isn't white. And like, we want to get together, talk about our traumas and talk about how to put more of our voices within the Boston cabinet, because there's a lot of that out there. Armenian, you know, maybe there, I like, I don't know anything, but I know that AOC is good hire for her because she represents her district. She looks like the people she represents. She lived there. So she came out of it. Now, she seems a little different than people from Bronx. Like, she's a little bit more high and mighty as opposed to people I know from the Bronx. But, you know, respect. I respect it. So well, I don't know enough about her, but I respect the fact that they did that. And it was a good, that makes sense to me. You know, a dude from L.A. shouldn't be representing the Bronx if he's not from the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? So that makes sense. But, like, and that would make sense if you like, hey, we have a lot of different races that aren't represented. Let's do that. But to actually go, fuck the whites. It wasn't just fuck the whites. It was fuck the whites for Christmas. Jesus Christ, Christmas is fucking Santa. Whether it's true or not, Santa's a big fat white guy. We can't come? Like, come on, man. In fact, I went to my boy, Stephen Ho, one of the original Ninja Turtles, and one of the best Thanksgiving I ever had was him because his mom is Chinese, re legit Chinese, and she puts soy sauce on the turkey. It was one of the best Thanksgiving turkeys I've ever had in my life. And I wouldn't have known that had he didn't allow a white over there. He allowed a white. So, thank God. So, I mean, that's just crazy. That's reverse racism. I get it. It would piss you off. But it's like the media should cover it. A white mayor would have been fired. I'm not even saying fire her. I just have her talk and go, yeah, that was fucking crazy racist, right? Like, be real. Be more like the white guy who's probably not white because he's Jewish and Jews consider themselves their own race. Um, Dave Portnoy, you know. You could say Jews are a white man, but Jews consider themselves their own thing. I don't think they consider themselves white. Um, but Dave Portnoy speaks from the hip. And he would be like, yeah, okay, that's fucked up. <laughs> like, I would rather have a straight talking guy. I'm sorry that he is a male. He's not of non-whiteness. But he's Jewish. So maybe that would give him, like, he should be the mayor of Boston. Or, or a female version of him. Somebody's a straight shooter. That's bullshit. And if anyone did that at all, we would be fucking persecuted. And I get it. We have a lot of blood on our hands. But, you know, other races do too. You want to talk about that? Ready? Genghis Khan, everybody. He wasn't exactly a fucking sweetheart. Where was he from? Genghis Khan. He wasn't from fucking Albuquerque. All right? He's not from Peoria. 
So you could say you could argue that, right? Anyway, why am I doing this? Because I just want to fucking talk to you and connect and see if there's like-minded people out there. World's insane. Give your loved one the flowers. Try not to argue. Keep an open mind. Like, subscribe. Peace.